Hey everybody, welcome to the Muddy Reviews. Uh, today is going to be a review slash overview slash kit shakedown of my Belgian SFG Ops Core helmet build. Uh, so I'm just going to start with the top of this helmet since it's already in this uh, prone position and we're going to go uh, around the helmet from there. I'll just pick a random direction and just run with it and we'll go all the way around until we're done with the whole helmet and then that's it. So. Starting off, we have a Watson Hell, Hellstar Gen 3 strobe on the top of the helmet right here. Uh, I've done a video on this strobe already, and I'll have a link below about where you can see the actual review and my complete thoughts on the strobe. Um, a little more in-depth since that video, though. Uh, the strobe is really nice. Uh, it, it holds up well. I've got to actually play with it a few times in actual games and I, I dig the strobe quite a bit uh as you can see i've got this fishing lead hooked into my helmet cover this is an ops core cover and this is what i use as my dummy cord retention for the strobe and i've mentioned uh these fishing leads before in other videos and this is just a little better i guess view of that fishing lead retention right here I've got a uh, IR square on top of the helmet for IFF, and then we're just going to shoot to the back of the helmet. Get the comms out of the way. Move these guys. So on the back of the helmet, we have an OpsCore um, counterweight pouch. Uh, it's in uh, Coyote Brown slash Urban Tan, and it's a uh, real OpsCore counterweight. And you can tell, uh, usually the quickest way to tell a real one from a fake one is because they actually have the uh, black hypoon, whatever this material is. But now some of the newer repros actually have the black and brown. So that's now not becoming so readily apparent. Uh, the older ones, it was just brown, brown, or tan and brown. Uh, inside, I'm not running the actual... Um, Weights, I'm running batteries, so I've got C123As, AA's, and AAA's. Uh, these are all common batteries that I have on my kit that are used in different items such as the strobe, uh, my comms, and lights and whatnot on uh, my helmet or my gun. I have a call sign patch. It's like a thick like PVC plastic. It's actual IR. Uh, it's for my call signs, Zulu 4. All right, we're going to go ahead and shoot this direction uh, on this side of the house. So uh, it's, this is a real ops core cover. It's an actual ops core um, high cut cover. Uh, so this direction we have uh, arc rails. These are real ops core arc rails that I used. I replaced for the uh, fake ones. And these are real uh, 3M ops core. Uh, it, it popped in on me. Um, arc rail mounts for the uh, comms. These are not real comms. Uh, these are SkyTac uh, ComTac 3 repros, which I painted, just like I painted the uh, arc rail adapters. I had seen some uh, Belgian operators painting their shit like this, and I thought it looked kind of neat. So I decided to go that route myself. Uh, on this side, you can see another little fishing... Fishing... Uh, lure like a uh, tether this is for my contour camera when i run it um, i have a belgium ir flag uh, this is a fake one i got off aliexpress i plan on replacing this with a better one uh, once i can find one because this is not actual ir and i don't like the fact that it's not ir uh, coming around to the front i've got a replica of the uh, skeletal ops core uh, vashrab it's a really good replica. It's um, FDE. It's made of aluminum. I've got a re repro. Ugh. I've got a uh, review of this, and I'll link that below in the description so you can see my thoughts on this actual shroud. Uh, it's held up quite nicely. This is my third, no fourth shroud I've purchased. I've got a black one on my Maritime. I've got one on my FGE helmet build, and one on my sons, and this one. So the, the, to give you an idea of how good they are, that's how good they are, their quality. Uh, coming around to this side, we have a uh, Princeton Tech helmet light. Uh, it's a green 
green light. Gives you varying brightnesses. Now I've got it kind of semi-secured underneath the uh, MVG lanyard coming out of the arc rail. I've also got a OD green pistol lanyard that has been chopped up and is used as a secondary NVG retention. Uh, this is something that I guess the Belgian SFG do. Um, I got the, I saw some pictures of this and then also uh, a Belgian JTAC I know I was speaking to. Uh, he had mentioned, hey, if you want to kind of add a little spice to your build to make it a little more Belgian-y, uh, put, the, put a, a green or brown pistol lanyard on there and it, it will definitely add that extra little touch. So I said, yeah, let's, let's do that. And um, so I added it in. Uh, kind of cool thing is I, re I realized um, I had actually did something similar to this when I was in Iraq back around 2007. Uh, I used to run a, uh, it's a, a lot thicker than this one, it was bigger, uh, tan pistol lanyard. And I would run it on my Mitch 2002 because it had like uh, the point where it would connect to your belt. I screwed it directly to the back of the helmet. So it acted as a goggle retention strap and an NVG retention. So. I thought it was kind of cool. You know, what is old is new again. Uh, underneath that, I've got a NATO identification patch for Belgium. Um, I'll have a link to where I got this patch from below. Uh, they have a Instagram page as well as, I believe, a Facebook. Again, uh, tax guy contacts. Let me get this out of the way, though. So we're going to go internal now and talk about the inside of the helmet. So internally, uh, the helmet is a replica octile that came with the helmet. Uh, this is a thicker shell. This is I got this helmet is a little older. Um, this helmet was actually picked up in Japan. I don't know who made it. Um, it's not an FMA. Might be TMC, but it's a lot thicker shell. It was one of the better quality Ops Corps replicas at the time. Um, I picked this up around two thousand and. 10 2011 and i've had it for a long time uh, it was one of the first large shells uh, that they that i'd ever seen produced because at that point almost every ops core was like a medium medium large this was like the first like a large extra large that really ever kind of came around so that's kind of cool uh, but internally it has a uh sorry so yeah i was wrong sorry so this is not the the Octile that came with it. This Octile came out of another Ops Core that I dropped in here because this is an FMA Octile. It's a newer Octile. It's got the, it's a, a lot nicer. Um, I believe this this is the one that came out of my fg and &E helmet. And uh, when you see my fg and &E helmet build, uh, you'll see what I replaced uh, with this Octile. Uh, it's an FMA Octile. It's, it's a repro. Uh, and internally, we have a mixture of real <clears throat> excuse me, real ops core pads and uh, FMA uh, pads because I upgraded from the older pads because they were really trash. That was the only downfall about this helmet. Uh, other, so the only thing original from this helmet from the time in Japan was uh, the shell. Everything else is either real ops core or uh, the newer FMA stuff. So yeah, that is my entire walkthrough of this uh, Belgian helmet. I hope you enjoyed the uh, walkthrough. Uh, it's not a super complicated build. It's just a very specific build. It requires um, the ops core cover, uh, the counterweight, contact threes, and the Hellstar. Those are the, those are the major components that are uh, necessary for the build. Everything else is kind of just add add to your leisure. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any specific questions about anything on here that I may not have done a standalone video on, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to expand on it. Um, maybe even do a separate video. If you're familiar with the SFG and uh, you're seeing this video, uh, let me know how my build is. Let me know if it was good or bad or indifferent. Uh, if you're a Belgian uh, yourself and just were like, yo, that's pretty dope or yo, that's fucked up, that's wrong, let me know. I'd love to hear why that's wrong and what I did wrong or what I did good because uh, I would love to make this a better build and also just more um, correct and representative of the unit because uh, I don't do these impressions willy-nilly. I try to uh, keep my kits as 
close to uh, realistic as possible and also to be as respectful as possible to the units in question. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I will hopefully see you all return for the next video, which will be a Spanish FG&E Ops Corps uh, helmet build uh, shakedown. So take care. Thanks a lot.